On this episode of FCO Fishing NZ, we take a look at some shallow water snapper fishing tackle and techniques. And a bit of Northland hospitality turns into a great fishing trip in a rather unexpected hotspot. We will show you how to cook a piece of fish perfectly. And it's all girl power on our dive segment with Darren's daughter Gemma leading the way. Well, normally I have a plan when I go fishing and I had a plan on this trip. We were um, heading north, we are at Pukanui, which is at Hohora Harbour, in the far north. And my plan was, because this is a very narrow part of the country, you've got the east coast and the west coast and lots of places that you can go fishing. But we've been camping here and basically we've been hunkered down in our tent for the last four days with 50 to 60 knot winds, torrential rain and very, very few fishing opportunities. In fact, we haven't even tried to go fishing. But we're finally just getting a little break in the weather. It's cracked open a little bit, but still it's blowing really hard. So we're very, very limited as to where we can fish. There's about a five metre swell on 90 Mile Beach, so that's out. And most of the far north rock ledges have got a big swell on them too, so we're out there. But fortunately, I went down to this local store, the Four Square store here in Hohora, and I met up with the owner, who's Mark Crammond is his name. And he said, oh, I'm going out fishing tonight, you can come with me. And I said, where are you going? The weather's terrible. And he said, oh, look, you don't need to go far here. We've just got to go out in the harbour and you'll catch all the fish you want. And I was going, oh, you know, I've heard these stories before. You know, a lot of people know they say they can catch fish. So bear with us. We're going out in Hohora Harbour, which is a harbour that's very, very tiny and very, very safe for small crafts, even in these winds, which are probably still 40 knots. So we're going to go out with Mark tonight and uh, try and catch a fish. But before we head out this afternoon, we're heading out at about 3, 3.30 because Mark said we want to fish an outgoing tide. The last couple of hours is the outgoing. He reckons his spot fishes best then. So I thought I'd give you some tips on how I'm going to approach this trip and what gear I'm going to select. The first thing I had to do is think about my rods and reels. And primarily we're targeting snapper here and apparently they get pretty big. He said, oh, you sometimes get five, six kilo fish in these one to two meters of water. I'm going, wow, that's amazing. But to target these fish, you need a bit of stealth. So what I've uh, chosen is a little Daiwa Solstice reel spooled with six kilo Black Magic Tough Line. Now that's gonna handle any fish because there's no structures that they're gonna bust me off on. It's pretty much a shelly bottom. And this is a high speed reel with a nice Daiwa Monster Mess rod with a nice soft tip so I can feel the bites. Also the main advantage I chose this reel is because it's, it's free spool, which means that when I take it out of gear, I can thumb the spool and let line pull off. And this is how I fish for snapper. You let them take the bait and when they're running freely, you throw it into gear. That's the first big tip. Usually free spool your snapper. And that's why I've chosen this setup. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is the hook setup. We're fishing for fairly big snapper, like I say, six kilos plus maybe. So you want a fairly decent solid hook and you're gonna be using fairly solid baits. But the trace you use as well. A fish that size can bust you off very easily by biting through. So I need to think about my trace selection. And I've decided to go for 60 pound Black Magic Tough Trace. I was tossing up between 40 pound fluorocarbon and 60 pound Tough Trace, but I thought the Tough Trace a bit more supple so it'd be good in that shallow water. Although shallow water fishing, um, you don't need a lot of tackle. Um, you've got to make a, take a selection of hooks with you because you might be using baits from this big to maybe this big. So what I like to do, I fish mainly with recurves or J hooks in the shallow water situation because sometimes you are striking the fish. If you're leaving a set bait, you could probably use a recurve hook. So I've got some Wasabi 7 Baro, which is my big hook. And I could put a big bait out on that big fillet of mullet or a whole pilchard or whatever. And I've also got some five bar o j style hooks which j are not recurve these ones when you're letting the fish run with the bait you generally strike the fish with a recurve hook you let the weight come on that's the primary difference but two different sizes to accommodate the different sorts of bait now i've decided on my rod and reel i've decided on my hooks you need a variety of sinkers from maybe one to two ounces down to about quarter of an ounce and quite often you have to change your sinker weight as you're fishing through the states of the tide. And this can make a really big difference. People don't realize how important the, this is because as the current slackens off, if you just anchor your bait on the bottom, it just sort of sits there and sometimes the starfish suck on it. But when you're stray lining a bait in shallow water and you're, you're looking for delicate presentation, you want that bait to sort of roll backwards. And quite often the fish are sitting at the back of the boat and they'll come up and the bait will come past them and they'll grab it as they come past. So sinker weight, very, very important.
what I've done is I've joined my leader to my main line using a joining knot. Now there are any number of knots you can use. You can use a double uni, you can use a seven times around surgeon's loop. Uh, there are lots of knots. But make sure it's one that you trust and one you're happy with. This one I use is very fine and it goes through the guides properly. And I've got about uh, a meter of leader. That's probably all you need for snapper fishing in the harbour. Now the next little trick is I've got a little bit of silicon tubing here. What I do with this, I slide my trace line through the silicon tubing and then I double it back around like so pull it out and this forms a stopper see that? and I'll show you why we use this I get my sinker slide it on my line that way when we're casting our baits the stopper stops the sinker from sliding all the way up the line now that's very important because um, when you've got big baits on and you cast them up, if the sinker flies up the line you end up getting twisted up and tangled up. The last part of constructing my trace setup is just to attach my hook. And I've decided to go for the wasabi recurve and all I do is tie that on using a uni knot. Four to five times around. Wet your knot, always wet your knot. Slide it down carefully. Don't pull your knots fast because that can burn your line. Then just trim off the tag end. So there's my shallow water leader ready to go with my stopper so that my sinker won't ride up my line. Very simple, but I tell you what, it's a very, very effective way of fishing. And when you're doing that stealth fishing, you don't want too much garbage on the end of your line. Just get there and get the fish. Coming up, how to cook a piece of fish perfectly and girls can do anything. Because I'm going out at three o'clock and chances are I won't be back until dark, I thought I'd better cook up a bit of uh, lunch or dinner as it may be, um, so I'm not uh, getting hungry when I'm on the boat. And one of the things when you're away camping, a lot of people, they love a piece of fish, but they quite often don't quite get it right. So I thought I'd just share my simple way to do floured pan fried fish um, out while you're camping. Because I hate seeing fish that get stewed and boiled and looks disgusting. So it's very simple, but you just got to follow a few simple rules. And the first key element is to have a decent stove that has really good pressure. And I've got one here and I'll fire it up and I'll show you what I mean. Now this stove's a Coleman even temp and you know it's got wind baffles and on a windy day you need something like this but also it has quite high pressure jets and that's the other key to a good camp stove because if you don't get enough heat the, the wind will blow all the heat away and it takes forever to cook anything. So you listen to this baby fire up. And the first key to cooking a good piece of fish is to actually heat your pan first. So I'll put my pan on the heat, heat your pan and then add the oil once the pan is heated. So what I've got here is my snapper, nicely cleaned and filleted. And what I'm going to do, before I flour it, I'm actually going to season my snapper first with a bit of salt and pepper. Because I like the seasoning to go on the fish as well as the flour. I've seasoned my fish. Now what I'm going to do is I've got some flour, about two tablespoons of flour, two fillets, and I've pre-seasoned this with salt and pepper. I keep it in an airtight container while I'm camping for two reasons, to keep the flies and bugs out, also to stop it blowing away in these big winds we've got. And all I'm going to do is just put my fillets in here, put the lid on, this is no mess cooking, and give it a shake. And that gives it a good coating of flour. Then I undo it, dust it off and put it in the pan. So that's cooking nicely. Once it starts to go opaque I like to add a little butter or margarine and what that does is tends to give your fish a little colour. So I can see that this is um, opaque almost cooked right through and the thickness of the fish I know I'm going to be able to cook it in this pan so I know it's brown underneath as well. So what I'm going to use is tongs and a spatula to turn it carefully. So it's simple pan fried fish, just dusted in flour. Now it's come up, see it's all in one piece, it's not cracked or broken, and it looks absolutely divine and I'm looking forward to eating it. Little squeeze of lemon.
absolutely perfect, moist in the middle, crunchy on the outside, the lemon just adds a little bit. I'm ready to go fishing, next time you see me we'll be catching fish. Spearfishing is perceived to be a male dominated sport. That's not the case at all. Today I'm diving with my daughter Gemma so she can show you what girls can do. There are a couple of good crays hiding under a rock below me so down I went to have a go. You can't hesitate when going for crayfish. If they're aware of your presence they will shoot back deep in a hole where you'll never catch them. But I was quick enough to get this one. When you're holding them and they're flapping about too much, grab them by the horns and then across the back. That way there's no escape. Just make sure you don't get them too close to your body as they'll hold on to you and possibly damage your suit. Who said girls can't catch crayfish? Getting them in a small catch bag can be tricky because of all their legs and feelers. Push them in tail first and if you loosen your grip, they'll think they've escaped and carry on swimming backwards into the bag. Remember to tighten those drawstrings so they can't get out. There was still another one down there, so I breathed up ready to head back down for another go. You don't need to be able to hold your breath for ages. Make sure you have a nice warm wetsuit so you don't get cold. I was a little slow to start with, so reached deep into the hole to try feel for it. After a strong tug, I had it. A quick check under the tail to make sure it didn't have eggs, then back into the bag. You see some amazing things when you look around. We now had a healthy looking bag full. Next on the menu was butterfish. These fish are relatively easy to shoot but still require a little bit of technique. I loaded up my gun, made sure I wasn't tangled in my float line, then headed off. Lying amongst the weed, I lined it up and got it. A quick icky to the head meant no unnecessary suffering. I find it difficult loading big heavy rubbers, so I've made up this light witty hybrid carbon spear gun with two 14mm rubbers. They are very easy to load, but because there are two rubbers, it has still got plenty of grunt. I've found it perfect for all the North Island species I've come across. Dad and I were keen to take some blue Mau Mau home for the smoker, so we found a school and got amongst it. They are tasty little fish, but are a pretty small target. A good way to get them is by lying on the bottom, gun extended, and waiting for one to swim right in front of the spear. Then bang! Last stop before heading back to the boat was checking out a couple of ledges for snapper. I swam quietly over a ledge and saw a nice penny. Luckily he wasn't too clever, as I had my fins flapping about all over the place, giving away my position. Try and keep your body flat on the bottom, and don't let your fins float up and kick them around. 
quick shot at the snapper and we were done for the day. Here's my proof that girls can in fact do it too. Coming up, we head out for a fish in Hohora Harbour. Yeah, good day, Deb. Um, three PAB. One of the most sensible things a boaty can do is learn as much as possible about safe boating. The easiest way to do that is go to the Coast Guard Boating Education website, www.cbes.org.nz. The Coast Guard Boating Education Service offers courses for beginners and new boaties right up to getting prepared for offshore cruising. It's simple to find a course that suits you. There are even some courses that you can study in the comfort of your own home. Mark soon had us positioned on the edge of a channel and we were casting back into two metres of water. We're in Hohora Harbour, I'm with Mark Crammon who owns the Hohora Store Four Square or Hohora Wharf Four Square Store, it's a bit of a mouthful that. Yeah. Hey Mark, thanks. It's one of these trips, I came up here we were doing a bit of fishing and we haven't been doing very well and we popped into the store and had a chat to Mark and he said well actually I'm going out tomorrow, why don't you jump on the boat with me and we'll show you what goes on in the harbour. We've launched and we've come five minutes from the boat ramp in the middle of uh, Hohora Harbour and we're going to try and catch some pretty big snapper, Mark? Yep, yeah, see what we can get. Yeah, you get mainly snapper? Um, yeah, you get a bit of everything up here. Yep. Kawai are good, good yep. big kawai, snapper. Um, snapper's the main one. Yep. Uh, oyster farm at the top of the harbour, they yep. feed up there. Yep. But um, not just any old snapper, you get the Hohora snapper up the here. The Hohora snapper, oh, I like the Hohora snapper. And, um, it's a, it's a pretty pristine harbour this one. Yeah, we've got a bit of a sou'wester on it at the moment, yeah. so it's a bit choppy, but yeah. uh, it is very clean. Yeah. Um, you can be in four or five metres of water and see the starfish on the bottom. It is a beautiful harbour. Yeah. Great harbour for fish. And they get a few kingies and John Dorries off the local Pukanui Wharf, and uh, yeah, it's just a, an interesting place to be. Like I say, it's, it's blowing a bit. The conditions aren't that flash, but we'll give it a go eh, and see if we catch something. See what we can get. I'm feeling pretty confident because he's pretty confident, so we'll go and give it a go. Maybe a two kilo snapper. Uh, fishing pretty shallow. So they really do fight like nothing. What time to best fishing? 5.30, sort of two hours before dead low is uh, best fishing up the harbour here. Um, and then you can turn around and head up into the oyster farm and sort of fish the incoming. So uh, 5.30 we'll be into it. We've been fishing for about, I don't know, half an hour. Jeremy caught a couple of fish, and a couple of snapper and a kawai. I missed a bite and now I just, this one got hit on the drop and I tell you what, it whacked me and it peeled back about 30 metres of line. And I'm not saying it's a big one, it might only be about the same size as Jeremy's, but you can only hope. We're fishing, I don't know, two minutes from the main, uh, main road of uh, Hohora in Hohora Harbour. That's what you're going to say, fishing in your own backyard is a, a real good, uh, place we're going to use about a dollar fifties worth of gas getting back to the ramp and here comes my fish. That's a, a nice fish. Oh. Okay, grab up. Maybe two and a half, might touch three kilos. It's got the wasabi recurve right in the corner of the mouth. He just nailed that bait perfectly. See if the boys can get some now. I've caught my one, that's all I'm going to catch tonight. Not a, not a big one. Not a big one unless it's just having a bit of a doze, but a nice little Penny snapper, or on a piece of mullet. There we go. 
They're the good eating ones. Put him out of his misery pretty quickly. Where's the last bait? Spot, there you go. There were no pickers at this fishing spot. The fish would just pick up the bait and go. Jeremy was using a two hook fixed rig with a couple of black magic KL five barrow hooks and a half ounce right, sinker. Jeremy. And it seemed to be Feels doing like. the trick. Leave out. Kilo and a half, two kilos, kilo and a half maybe. Got a fish in the harbour. Yeah, exactly mate. Put him back I think. We were using half pilchard bait and large strips of fresh mullet and kawai fillets with the skin removed. There was no stopping Jeremy as he once again hooked up onto a fish that was determined to race off up the harbour. Again we were calling it for a big trevally, but you just never know with this kind of fishing. Might add a bit of a run to it. Now Billy's bought a future rally around, eh? Okay. Come on up, oh, snap. snapper. <laughs> How was that for a run? That's sort of what we were waiting for, isn't it? Shallow water, they take off straight sideways. Can't go down. And we were talking about last bait of the day and all that, weren't we? Ready to pack up? No, not yet. Four kilo. Four and a half. How deep the water? Sound is saying about six metres. Six metres. Beautiful. Okay. It's about eight o'clock in the evening now. We fished for about four hours and we've put, I don't know, four nice snapper and Jeremy's caught a couple of nice trevally and a couple of carboy in the bin. Like I say, we're fishing in Hohora Harbour. It's no minute, no more than two minutes back to the boat ramp. And you know, it's a sort of really special fishing, fishing in your own backyard. Thanks to Mark, he's really uh, showed us where to go. And, and to give you an insight, um, I can see the lights on the wharf at Pukanui here from where we're fishing. So we're still getting the odd bite though, it's sort of last, last baits. If we can get one more. 